Um, just looking around the room, I see a lot of, uh, like Eric said, a lot of former uh, Hall of Famers here, or current Hall of Famers that have been inducted in the past. <clears throat> if you're able, if you could rise and uh, we could recognize you, if you're, if you're a member of the Knoxville Raceway Hall of Fame, go ahead and rise for us if you can. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. All right. That might be a record number of inductees here at the luncheon, so uh, uh, very great to see that. Um, if it is your first time here, uh, I am uh, very informal uh, here. Uh, I know a lot of people are nervous to get up here. They think they have to make a speech, all that sort of thing. Um, we're just going to talk about you a little bit and then uh, ask you a question or two. And then if you do have a list of, of people you'd like to thank, we can do that. But uh, we do, uh, we do uh, try to make this kind of informal. Okay, uh, this year uh, we're going to go alphabetically, so I'm going to start with my buddy Tony Bachhoven, uh, announcer here, and uh, Tony grew up watching his father compete in drag racing, and uh, that's when he caught the racing fever. In 1996, he was asked to uh, fill in as an announcer for the night, we'll talk about that a little bit, which led to the job offer from uh, Ralph Campitani shortly thereafter. This year is his 28th season as announcer, which is uh, the longest serving announcer of all time at the Knoxville Raceway. And uh, he's also announced a course across the country on uh, different TV networks and in Australia a couple years ago. That was cool. And, and uh, he's been a part of uh, a lot of television and radio crews. Uh, but throughout it all, he's remained our voice here at the Knoxville Raceway for the last uh, 28 years. And Tony, I'd like to talk to you a little bit. Uh, you and I kind of grew up the same era listening to Jack Herway and Tim Trier a lot. And talk about uh, when you're invited to come up. Yeah, so uh, you're right. I listened to Tim and, and Jack and Dennis Wilson. And, um, you know, I knew Tim from when I was uh, going to the drag races because he also announced down at Eddieville at the time. But uh, I spent a lot of time at my house as a little kid, um, him and his brother. But uh, getting to know Jack uh, was a result of sitting in Section F, Row 7, and his daughters all sat there. And so uh, I got to meet Jack through that. And then, uh, you know, Jack, as you all know, is kind of a character. And, and I said to him one night that, you know, to be an announcer, you don't have to be very smart. You just have to like to hear yourself talk. And, uh, of course, he laughed, and about a year or two later, he called and reminded me of that and said, uh, you know, you're the dumbest guy I know, so why don't you come fill in for Dave Reef while he's gone because Dave was going off to interview for uh, TNN at the time. And so uh, I did that, and then uh, the next week, I won't ever forget, Arlita called me, and she said, uh, Mr. Capitani wants to speak to you, and she put me on hold. Didn't give me a chance to ask why or anything, and I'm thinking, Man, I'm never going to be able to go back there again. He's going to tell me to stay home. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to come back and, and announce, and uh, he said, we'll even pay you. And so I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And so that's how it happened for me. But, uh, yeah, Jack is, has been a great influence on me uh, from an announcing perspective, but just, he's just a great friend. And, uh, you know, social media is a, a rough place, and, and he often still to this day reminds me that, Ah, don't worry about those people, you know, they're, they're not even coming to the races half the time. So uh, anyway, but Jack and Tim and Dennis Wilson were a big part of my youth growing up uh, as an announcer and coming to where we are today. And was there something in you at a young age that you wanted to announce or was that something you, you really didn't think about? No, I wanted to race. I wanted to be a race car driver and um, my folks aren't millionaires, so that wasn't going to happen. And uh, if I wanted to race, I had to pay for it myself, and I didn't have a good enough job to support it. And um, it, the whole announcing thing really happened kind of as a joke between Jack and I. And um, I enjoyed it and had a good time with it, and they haven't asked me to not come back yet. So, <laughs> Well, we're glad you did. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a good deal. Is there anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, obviously, Jack, but uh, who else? Yeah, you know, Jack and, and Tim and Dennis, uh, you know, my first year as an announcer was rough once I actually started uh, coming every week. And, um, you know, if, if you remember, some of you have been around a while, um, Jack used to tell me we're not auctioneers, we're race car announcers, because I talked really fast back then. And um, so just uh, I appreciate those guys. Um, Cappy, um, you know, Cappy was a great mentor to me when I started here and um, just continually encouraging me to come back and, and have fun with it. He's Quit taking it so serious and have fun. And so I try to remind people of that, you know. But, um, you know, I just want to wanna congratulate the other inductees that are going in. Uh, I was thinking this morning, I remember when Tony was racing and uh, I was announcing Tony racing, but Matt was just hanging out in the pits. And 
Um, and then he starts racing, and uh, so it's pretty cool to get a go in with Matt. And, and uh, every one of you I have a story about that's, that's going in today. So uh, congratulations to all of you. It's, you've, you've certainly earned it. All right, Tony Bacco, and let's give him a round of applause. Uh, next up, we're going to recognize Mahayla Cox. She's served on the safety crew for 31 years, from 1976 to 2006. Initially, the crew wore shirts and jeans, but after her brother Pat was burned in a fire, she advocated for fire suits. At the time, state law required a doctor on site, so there was no dedicated ambulance. Mahayla ensured the Knoxville Raceway got its first ambulance by getting the fire and safety crew EMT certified, eliminating the need for a doctor. By the early 1990s, Mahayla led the fire and safety crews, recruiting her brother Mike and establishing training and certification standards. Mahayla, whose primary job was the emergency coordinator for Marion County, retired from the safety crew again at the end of the 2006 season. And I think uh, Christy Woodruff here, uh, let's give her a round of applause here to accept. <laughs> Now, Christy, uh, Mahela is really the reason we are where we are today with our fire and safety crew. Yes, we are. Um, in her capacity and her job as the emergency manager for Marion County, she wrote the safety procedures that we have here at the racetrack. So in case shit hits the fan, we're using her plan. And, and we still use most of that plan today. And it's hard to imagine now no ambulance at the track or things like that, but she was the one who really influenced that. Yes, yeah, she was. Um, her brother, Pat, is the one who got her involved in it, and she joked around and said, yeah, I was here before Cappy was. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, we want to recognize her today. Any, anything else you want to add? She wanted to say thanks to Cappy, even though he's not here. She, she really did appreciate having all the years out here. And I, I, I met her when I was 11. And my parents allowed us to run around with her and, and Ruth because they were on the safety crew and we had to be safe because we were with them. <laughs> so, you know, I, I've known her a very long time. I, I visit her out at the, at the nursing home where she is. And I'll be taking her plaque out her, to her today. So give her a big round of applause because they're Facebook living it for her so she can see. So hi, Mahela. We miss you. <laughs> and she has family here today as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah, it's good that she has family here. She did consider if you raced at Knoxville Raceway, you were part of her family. So she took care of you like family. And the guys out here that were ever in an accident here while she was on the crew, you knew you were going to get taken care of, as well as the rest of the people on her team. I, I mean, that crew was, they were spot on. For the, for the day and the equipment they had, no worries. We, we wanted to race here anywhere, anywhere here, whether than anywhere else, because we knew we were protected here. Absolutely, and it continues today, and she was, she was, the, she was the foundation. Mahela Cox, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Christy, have you take a picture over here real quick. All right, Don Droud, Jr. Don's been a regular around here uh, since uh, 1984 or so, off and on. He's achieved 12 feature wins, finished second in the 410 points four times, 97, 98, 01, and 10. He made history as the first driver to set a sub-15 second track record with a time of 14,934. That was in uh, 1998. He probably doesn't remember this. Uh, 1998. And uh, that record stood for about seven years, as I recall. Um, and uh, won the 1,200-pound Nationals back in 2001, $12,000 for Mark Birch, who's in the crowd uh, tonight. Uh, over 97 cars that were here. In 2006, uh, he set the overall quick time at the Knoxville Nationals while driving for Daryl Socher. And Don started the Knoxville Nationals five times for five different car owners. So there's not very many people that can say that. Uh, but uh, Craig Cormack, I saw him back here. Mark Birch, uh, Daryl Socher, the late Daryl Socher, Marty Johnson, and Gil Sonner. Additionally, Don has been competitive in multiple midget series events at Knoxville and elsewhere. And uh, Don, I know you're a guy for the spotlight, but let's uh, talk about your uh, career a little bit here. Uh, and uh, all those years uh, driving over from Lincoln, Nebraska, and I know there were other choices closer to you, but you came to Knoxville. Yeah, I just remember as my kid, uh, as a kid, my dad talking about Knoxville, and uh, we never got to come to the Nationals with those guys. 
uh, when they were going. And uh, when I got the opportunity to start racing, which I wasn't supposed to get, um, I raced at Midwest Speedway for a couple years and then at Eagle, but ultimately I wanted to get over here because this is the place that you needed to be. And uh, what, what, uh, there's nothing really to prepare you for the big half mile here, so it was just, uh, you know, as most drivers did, it took some laps here. Yeah, I, this place never intimidated me. I, I mean, I don't know if it was because of the walls, uh, like you felt more secure as some of the racetracks that we've raced at that don't have walls. It feels harder to go faster on those. But uh, I, I got used to the speed right away, and it's never bothered me. Now, I think uh, experience is a big thing here at Knoxville, and you showed that over the years with different car owners. You could, you could make them go fast, and even this year, you show up earlier this year, and uh, I thought we might pull one off here the uh, first time out. That was all my car owners doing. <laughs> that had nothing to do with me. I was just holding it down. He, he made that thing fast and made it work. But, uh, yeah, I've been blessed. I've had a lot of really good car owners. I've had thousands of crew members that have helped over the years and sponsors and uh, everybody that's put me here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyone else you'd like to thank? Uh, I know you got a big group here today. Well, I just like to thank my family um, for all their support over the years. And right now in front of everybody, I have to apologize to my girls for all those long rides home <laughs> back to Lincoln after we didn't win when nobody could talk for four hours. So. <laughs> They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I see Megan nodding over there, so I know, I know uh, she knows what you're talking about. Well, congratulations to you. You've well deserved here uh, in the Knoxville Raceway Hall of Fame. Let's give him a round of applause, Don Droud, Jr. <laughs> Another driver and uh, now an owner uh, here at Knoxville, Matt Morrow. And Matt inherited his passion for racing. Of course, uh, we mentioned his father, Tony, earlier, already a member of the Knoxville Raceway Hall of Fame. He's a two-time uh, 360 track champion, 2008 and 17. He has nine feature wins in the 360 class and two in the 410 class. And uh, he's been competing in Knoxville, doesn't seem possible, but since 1996. And Matt has finished in the points for 13 seasons in the 360 class and nine seasons in the 410 class. Qualified for the 360 Nationals, aiming 10 times, achieving two top five finishes, including a second place in 2000. Since becoming a car owner, he secured the 410 Track Championship with Davey Heskin uh, in 2023, 2022. All right. Yeah, that was before you. Yep. Yeah, that was before you. Qualified for the Knoxville Nationals last year, <laughs> right? All right. All right, I was just reading. I shouldn't. I should have double checked. But um, Matt, uh, long history here. Uh, I know uh, following following your dad here and uh, him being a big influence for you uh, when you started in the four tens here in the family car and and moving on up into the forty seven and and other opportunities came about. Yeah, I, I owe it all to my dad here. Uh, he put me uh, with great people, is what he did. I mean, he he taught us to be around good people. Uh, we started off with Bob Trossel, and then I got to meet John Leverance and Howard Albright, and then it just keeps going from there. Donnie Saunders, Gill, Boob Thompson. I mean, we've been surrounded by legends of our sport, and these guys have all been great friends to us. And then as it got older, as I got older and as a car owner, you know, I got Butch Maxwell and Davey Heskin and Sam came along, and then their crew with the Grubles. I mean, it's I've been so blessed with just being around great people. Yeah, that I mean, just uh, great people and a great foundation. And uh, uh, talk about uh, moving over to the 360s uh, uh, when that happened and came about. And, and you became kind of uh, one of the strong runners there and, of course, won in championships. Yeah, I just couldn't afford to do it on my own. My dad owned my car for five years. And uh, after he went through a divorce, you know, it was time for me to be on my own. And so I figured out a way to do it for a year or two, and then uh, with help of Lee Nelson, and then, uh, you know, Gil Saunders and Donnie saved me because I was out of stuff, I was out of money, I had nothing, I was gonna miss a night, and I got in that car, and I think I drove for them for three years after that, and uh, then, you know, it was time for me to maybe go back on my own a little bit, and 
you know, I love the car owner side of it. I, I enjoy working on them more than I did driving later on in years. Yeah, absolutely. Working for full time at Carl Chevrolet and working on the race cars, that's, that's got to be a lot. But uh, like you said, you're surrounded by good people here now with your, the team you have now. Absolutely. We have, uh, I wouldn't want to do it any other way than what I do right now. I mean, these people that help me every week, uh, you know, they're, they're like family to us and they've been with me for a long time. Uh, I inherited some of them with Davy's crew, but you know, it, I just love doing this and wouldn't want to do anything else. All right, Matt Morrow, deserving of the Knoxville Raceway Hall of Fame. All right, next up is Bob Buns Richardson. I'm just going to call you Buns because that's what I've always called you. Um, of course, Bob's been here uh, since the 1970s. His 57 car uh, frequently appeared uh, at Knoxville. Ed Bowes was one of his drivers, Norman Martin. Of course, Doug Wolfgang, he worked with him, Lloyd Beckman and Lonnie Jensen. And as a mechanic, he secured four feature wins with Ray Lipsy, two in the 360 class and two in the 410 class in 1987 and 94. In 96, he played a crucial role in Doug Wolfgang's comeback after his fire, leading him to a win on 360 Nationals prelim night. And of course, uh, the latest, he, he really found a lot of success with uh, his uh, friend uh, Stuart and Billy Alley, his friends there, and Billy Alley in the 22 car. They won the 2003 360 track championship and back-to-back -back victories at the 360 Nationals, as well as success in the 410s as well. And Buns, I know you had a long speech prepared here, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I know you don't. Um, this is well-deserved, Buns. I know uh, people uh, have been mentioning your name around here uh, for the Hall of Fame for years, and I know that's not something you seek out, but it's got to be an honor for you to, yes, to be. It's a real honor, real honor for, to have people vote you into this, yes. Yeah, and uh, talk about back uh, with the 57 car. I mean, that was quite a list of drivers. You got drivers there in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame uh, that you had lined up. Uh, boy, that's so long ago. I, <laughs> I don't remember much about that. Uh, Lloyd drove and Lonnie Jensen and, oh, geez. Well, you're involved with a guy named Wolfgang, too, over the years. I think I brought Wolfgang over here the first time he ever raced sprint cars. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, and we all thank you for that, and I'm sure he does as well. Uh, but uh, late, it might be easier for you to remember the Billy Alley and, and Stuart and uh, all those times. Those were good times coming over, and it, it's fun when you come over and you're winning all the time. Well, it, uh, I got to thank my drivers. They're the ones that got me here. Otherwise, uh, if you don't have good drivers and people, good equipment and good stuff, you're not going anywhere. But you also need a good mechanic, I think. Well, they make you look good, whether it's <laughs> right or wrong. We always had the saying, if I screw up, you make up for it. And if you screw up, the other one makes up for it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that's a, that's a good relationship. Uh, do you get to the race as much here? Not lately. The TV's kind of spoiled things. <laughs> when you can watch it on Dirt Vision, <laughs> it's nice and cool and Absolutely. You're going to be in the pits tonight? Yep. All right. So if you want to grab Buns on the way by to help him, have him help you out, you can do that. <laughs> All right. Buns Richardson. <laughs> Our last inductee is Doug Rebarger uh, from right here in Knoxville. Doug served on the safety crew for 42 seasons from 1979 to 2020. He significantly impacted safety at Knoxville Raceway. He's known for his fearlessness. He would run toward crashes and fires to rescue drivers. He carries the burdens of those who lost their lives, which only fueled his passion for making cars safer. His quick, quick decision making and leadership improved the crew's effectiveness each year. Doug also helped develop equipment to address safety issues. His dedication and innovations have left a lasting legacy for sprint car racing. So Doug Rebarger, let's give him a round of applause. And Doug, who, who was your influence in getting into the safety crew side of things? Pat Moss. I, Pat Moss taught me a lot and taught me a lot of the do's and don'ts that, that I needed to know. <laughs> he never said don't run into the fire, though. Well, he forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, 
talk about some of the, what are the biggest innovations we've had over there? There's been a lot of them, but what would you put at the top as far as safety goes? The, the new containment seats is, they're, they're wonderful. We're, it's helped so many of the drivers, it's amazing. Just the safety equipment overall and mm -hmm. it's way, way better than it was 40 some years ago. All you have to do is go over to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame Museum and, and see what we were dealing with back then. But uh, yeah, I would agree with you, this, the seats and keeping the driver contained in the car, that's, that's the biggest change, I think. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, I see Doug Clark sat, sat in there and he, remember the bus ride? Oh, yeah. Well, he was uh, on the initial flagman for the initial bus ride back in the early 80s. <laughs> Was Carl the driver on that one? Carl Kinzer? Was he the driver? Yeah. yeah. I think he was. All right. Um, who'd you like to thank, Doug? Uh, I know there's a lot of people you've worked with over the years, countless people. I'd just like to thank everybody that's put up with me for 42 years. <laughs> well, that works. Let's give him a round of applause. Doug Rebarger.